All right, so here's a quick introduction to using the alphabet principle or building up principle to write electron configurations for various elements using the periodic table. Okay? And so basically, using this method, the periodic table will guide us through writing the electron configuration for a given element. Okay, so first thing I want to do is just remind you that every period in the periodic table is described by a different quantum number n. Okay, so the first period is n equals 1, second n equals 2, third n equals 3, and so on, n equals 4. Okay, and you can see this is just a partial periodic table that we so we can use it to discuss and still have room to write other things. Okay, so each row is identified by principal shell or principal quantum number n, okay? And the other thing that we want to remind ourselves of is that we have various blocks on the periodic table, okay? And basically, when we are in a given region or a block of the periodic table, this is the type of electron that we are filling, so the type of subshell that we're filling with electrons. Okay, so in blue I've identified the S block, okay, so we've seen this before. That means uh, as we're moving along the periodic table we are filling S electrons. Okay, over here let's go ahead and use orange. This is the P block, okay, so we're filling P electrons over here. Okay, let me just clean that up just a little bit. Okay, and then here, even though we just have a smidge of it, this is the D block here. Okay, and so also called the transition metals. All right, so when we write electron configurations, basically we are going to follow the periodic table and write down the orbitals that we're filling or have filled as we go along. Okay, so let's just do an example here for lithium. Okay, now we did see lithium in the introductory lecture video, but let's go ahead and use it anyway because now I can write a few more things here. All right, so for lithium, which is right here, okay, we want to write the electron configuration and so in this first row, starting at hydrogen, this is going to be 1s1, of course, and we don't write that down, but we're filling the 1s orbital, okay? This is 1s2, and now it's full, so we do write it down, okay? And then we get to lithium, so now we're up to lithium, and we are in the principal quantum shell 2, okay? And so we are going to write down 2 and s, we're filling s electrons and we only have one. So that's the electron configuration for lithium. All right. Let me just remind you also of our orbital energy diagram. And remember, see 1s is down here, 2s is the next lowest orbital, and then we would go to the 2p's, okay, and then 3s, etc., and then 3p's, and then 3d's are even higher than that. Or five. Okay, so that's just a little reminder. So in a way, we're we're really using the periodic table to follow this ordering. Okay, so let's um, let's also go ahead and fill in our orbital energy diagram with the three electrons for lithium. Okay, so we're going to put the first two in the lowest energy orbital, and that corresponds to one s two, and then we're going to put our last one in the two s, and that corresponds to two s one. Okay, so you can see where we're going. All right, so let's do one that is a little bit more in depth and starts using p electrons. So let's go ahead and start filling p electrons. So let's go ahead and look at fluorine. Okay, all right, so again, 1s1, 1s2. Okay, so we're going to write that down. All right. Now we're going to fill 
the 2s completely because we still haven't run out of electrons. Fluorine has nine electrons. Now we have slotted in four of them. Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And so here, the next orbital set to fill is 2p. All right. So we're going to put in five electrons into these this 2p orbital. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that fills our 2s and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and using the periodic table we get the same answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons go into that 2p. Okay, so that's the electron configuration for fluorine. Now remember also that we can abbreviate this using helium which is the previous noble gas so here's fluorine okay and then here's helium that's the next previous noble gas and so we could also write this helium and then the valence electrons okay and so that's the electron configuration for fluorine alright so let's do one more let's go ahead and look at sodium now. All right, so I'm going to change color so we don't get confused. How about purple? And let's go with this dark red. Okay. All right, so let's look at fluorine now. I'm sorry, sodium. That's what we wanted. All right, so sodium. And we want to write the electron configuration. Now, sodium has 11 electrons. Okay, so we need to fill in 11 electrons. So sodium 1s1, 1s2, okay, so that's the same. So 1s2, then 2s2, okay, so now we're here. And then now this time we're going to fill the 2p's all the way with all six electrons, 2p6. And if we count up those electrons, we see that we have... 8 and n equals 2, and then we have another 2, so we are up to 10 electrons. Sodium has 11, and so the next orbital to fill is the 3s, okay? So, and sodium is the first element in that period, so 3s1, okay? Now, let's just go ahead and go to our orbital energy diagram also, okay? So here's 2. So those two guys, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, okay, and then the last one goes here, all right? So this, this electron configuration is a shorthand way of writing that. Let's also write it using the noble gas configuration because it will make our valence electrons very obvious, okay? And so the previous noble gas for sodium is neon, okay? So another right way to write this electron configuration is to put helium in brackets. Sorry, not helium, neon in brackets. Okay? And then that means that this neon in brackets stands for everything before it. So 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6, all of that is, is incorporated into this neon noble gas configuration, and then we just write 3s1.